All right, so we're going to go ahead and configure some rip uh, just because I want to. I'm old school. What can you say? Uh, this is not part of our curriculum, so you can effectively skip this if you really want to, but I would suggest not in just going through the basics of configuring a very simple routing protocol uh, just to get your hands on something a little bit. So I've recreated our topology from GNS into Packet Tracer just because I like to make things different and change things up. Really no difference. You could do this in GNS as well. Uh, so all the IP addresses are the same. This is my 10.0, 10.4, 10.8, 10.12, and then this is 192.168.1.2.3 and 4. Everything's the same. I've given them IPs. I've turned on the interfaces. That's about where we're at. So we're going to turn on RIP, uh, and I'll start with the center router. So with the center router, we're in global config mode. I'm going to do router RIP. Gets me into RIP configuration mode. Next thing I want to do is tell it I want to use version 2. Uh, it is no longer 1990. I don't want to use version 1. I don't want to have anything to do with classful networking. I want to use classless. We're going to use version 2. I'm also going to say no auto summary. Remember when uh, I was talking about static routes and you can do uh, summary routes? Well, this will do summary routes, but automatically for you. So it will look at what routes you have configured, and if it's possible, it'll send a more a broader route uh, to the other routers to describe what's available on its side. Uh, problem being, that may cause some issues in certain networks. It might make it a little harder to diagnose because you're seeing these larger subnets being thrown around. Uh, I like to make things very descriptive so and, and, and detailed. So I like to leave auto summary off. Unless you're in a really big network and you have things well documented, just, you know, leave it off and unless you really, really need it turned on. Next thing we have to do is describe, uh, define what networks that we want to connect to other routers on. So the way this works is I need to execute a command that says I want to start sending RIP traffic to these other routers. And what we do is run the network command and we're going to define the network that I want to start sharing across. And you might be thinking, well, Andrew, that's 10.0.0.0. Don't you, are you then going to have to do 10.4 and 10.8 and 10.12 for your four links? You would think so, right? But it actually shows just the classful network range. Even though we're on version 2, this network command works off of the classful range. So any interface that I have on my router that has a, an IP configured of 10 dot anything is going to be included in the RIP process now. So that's, it makes your life a little easier because there's less commands to type, but it makes your life a little harder because then if you have some networks that you don't want it to share on, well now you have to go tell it to ignore those. Uh, and I'll get to that in a minute. So not only is that going to tell it what networks we want to share with, uh, but it's also going to define what networks we are going to share. So I'm saying I would like to talk RIP on any of my 10 dot interfaces and I'm going to tell those routers that are on my 10 dot interfaces about my 10 dot network. So it's kind of a two in one command. And that's actually the last, that's the only other command we have to do. That's it. We're done with RIP on this router. That's how simple RIP is. And eRIP is basically the same thing too. So we're going to go to our northern router and do the same thing. I'm going to go into router RIP version 2, no auto, and then I'm going to say network 10.0.0. So now I'm saying yes, I want to start sending RIP packets to my 10. network off my southern interface here. I also want to share my 192.168.1. network because that's the whole point of what we're doing here is I want to be able to access this network up here uh, from the network all the way down here in the south. So in order to do that, we have to also do the network command for that network. But, <laughs> there's always a but, there's a problem here. Now I'm not only telling my other routers about this network, but I'm also sending RIP traffic out this network, which is not necessarily a good thing because up this way is probably going to be end devices, uh, other computers, you know, things like that, that 
they don't really need rip traffic and we don't want them to see it to waste the bandwidth could be a security concern I don't really want that to happen so what's recommended you do is you make in the interface passive so we take a look at what interface this is that's downstream and we're going to tell it that's a passive interface so fast eth 0 slash 1 I'm in router rip still and I'm going to say passive interface fast eth 0 1 so that tells it do not send rip traffic out that way but this command is still valid so tell everyone about this network but don't send traffic out this interface so that now we've solved both both problems we're sharing out that network but I'm not sharing rip traffic out that direction because no one's over there that needs to listen to it uh, so that's a security concern that's a best practice to use your passive interfaces and other routing protocols have that same thing uh, that same functionality so and we'll get into that when we get to those so I've done router 3 I'm going to do the rest of them here. It should be pretty quick if I can type correctly. That was zero one, right? Yeah, it was. Okay, so let's go take a look at our main router. Hey, look at that. So now we have a route table that's starting to look a bit more interesting. We have some connected interfaces. Those are all of our 10 dot networks that are the crossover cables you see there. And then we have some RIP networks. See how that uh, code has changed to say it's a RIP network? Those networks have an administrative distance of 120. So remember I was talking about the different administrative distance values for the different protocols. That is an administrative distance of 120. It's available through those networks, uh, through those uh, gateways. 10.2, uh, which is up here, 10.6, 10.10, and uh, dot .14 over here. And then out whatever interface that's connected to. So now we have those routes. So that works out pretty well. And if I go check out the other routers, this router should know about these other three networks. So everyone should be sharing with everyone right now. And looks like they are. So that's all working as expected. And what's interesting with this one is he's also getting this connection over here and this connection over here that this connection over here that he didn't know about. He only knew about that one single connection for the 10 dot network. So not only is it learning about this 192.168, but it's also learning about these other 10 dot networks that are in between. So not necessarily the most helpful uh, you know, in this situation, but uh, could be if you had other devices strung off here. And, and you'll see that a lot. So now if I had a host PC on one and a host PC on another, it should work out. So we don't need to do any VLAN stuff. Um, we're just going to say this is VLAN 1, VLAN 1, VLAN 1, VLAN 1 on these um, on these specific networks. So that's fine. Remember VLANs are layer 2. Layer 2 is going to stop once we hit our router. So layer 2 is only valid in these areas when we're talking about VLANs. So I'm just going to leave them as default because we don't need to get too crazy here. And I'm just going to drop two PCs in. And we'll just go ahead and connect that up. The little lightning bolt here makes your life easy and automatically chooses stuff. 
We're going to let Spanning Tree negotiate and make sure everything is kosher. And it should be done in a second. There we go. And we're going to give that an IP address. This was dot two. So this is when I don't say two dot two. We'll give it. And then we're going to have to give his gateway, which is this. Remember? And then this one is four dot. So his gateway is four dot one. And we'll give an IP address, 4.2, just for fun. We'll go back to our main computer here. We'll see if we can ping. Ah, look at that. And it's working. So now we have dynamic routing protocol RIP running over this whole network and it's allowing communication from one subnet to another. So each one of these routers is a different subnet and not only that but I can from my PC here I can ping anything. I can ping uh, 3.1 which is this interface on router 4. I could ping one of the 10 dot IPs 10.0.0. .0. Uh, what was that 10? So I could ping one of those interfaces. Uh, you can ping anything because these routing tables are now converged. There's that converged term. And they have access to everything. One other uh, command we can do is if we define a default route. So, you, whoops, I'm getting config mode. And I'll just say that is available through, I don't know, dot two. So it'll go out the north. I can share that through RIP. So that's called um, redistributing my default uh, gateway. All right, Gateway of Last Resort is set up correctly. I, I ignored the uh, the interface, if you noticed. Uh, it'll still work, it's just not as efficient. Uh, and what I can do is in config mode, I can go into router rip, and I'm going to say default information originate. And when I say that, that is then going to share with the other routers where my default gateway is available. And if you look at one of the other routers here, I didn't have this configured before. And you can see how it says it's a RIP learned route, quad zeros, that Gateway of Last Resort is available via this router on this interface. And then it will go from this router, and it will say, well, where do I go? I'm going to go out dot two, which is going to go to this router. And then I don't have anything configured here, but theoretically it would then connect to the internet or something like that. So default information originate allows you to uh, share that gateway of last resort. So you don't have to go and configure it on every single router. You can configure it on that, you know, whatever your uh, top most router is that's closest to the internet. And then you can just distribute that down throughout your network. And so from there, uh, we're going to go to link state routing protocols and talk a bit about OSPF. And uh, we'll go from there.